and we're live. Happy Monday, everyone. Wow, I can't believe it's Monday already. Because, okay, did this happen to you? Did you have like Thursday was like this big day off and then you felt like that was Friday for the rest of the weekend and the whole so weekend? So my kids were off for a week and so was my spouse. And so I've been feeling that way for the past week. Okay. And then yesterday, everyone was like melting down and I'm like, what is happening here? And I was like, oh, everyone's going back to work tomorrow and school and they're like getting out of vacation mode. So I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, yeah, it's, uh, especially Friday. I just kept being like, wait, it doesn't feel like Friday. No, it feels like Saturday and then tomorrow's Sunday. And I was just like totally thrown off. So I'm, I'm happy to have a Monday back and like get back in the groove of normalcy. <laughs> As entrepreneurs, I don't know that we have such a I thing. know, right? Right. We say that loosely, loosely. Which is Hello, why everybody. So glad you're here. I am Danny Ackerman, the niche lady, and I have a very, very special guest today. Yes, everybody knows you're here too, Bougie. We'll get to you in a moment. He's now learned to sit on my monitor and stare at me like we're- Make sure you know. Yeah. He's like, I see you. <laughs> um, but I met Sarah Stiles. Uh, via the internet through her doing a presentation for the eBay Open. And I found her so easy to absorb the information that she had that I reached out and said, would you please come talk to my audience? Uh, because I know I struggle with analytics. I know many in my audience struggle with analytics. And so you are just the person to bring this down to bite-sized portions and help us understand the numbers that we need to be looking at in our business. And I want to just give you a moment to introduce yourself. Give us a little bougie. Really? No, you cannot mess with the camera. <laughs> the camera wobbles. That is the bird chewing. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Ah! Yeah, and he's biting me as I try to get him off of there. Okay, come on, Bouge. You need to behave yourself. You're not going to be able to be here anymore. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few moments to let everybody know your background and what you do and how it all relates to what we do. All right. Um, so I am Sarah, Sarah Styles LLC everywhere. So you can find me on all the different places, platforms, and social media. I am a reseller. So I sell on eBay and Poshmark. I have been on Poshmark for four years, eBay for two and a half years, but I did upcycle since like I was a teenager. I have been thrifting out of necessity since I was a child. Um, so that whole realm is very like normal to me. I didn't really have to learn how to do that. Uh, the math comes into play because I went to college to become a secondary math teacher. So middle school and high school math. The world had different plans for me. I never went into it. I went into corporate America looking, doing statistical modeling and trends and, you know, in corporate America. And then I had, I have three children. So once I had my second child, I started staying home, started reselling. And as I was out there looking for information on what do these numbers mean, how do these numbers, I was having a hard time finding it. Uh, so I created spreadsheets that helped me in my business. I created social media to help others learn how to do this because I was having a hard time finding the information. Uh, and so that's kind of grown into what it is now. I have social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and then I have multiple different uh, Google spreadsheets that help you look and analyze your numbers. Um, I geek out over spreadsheets and I know not everyone does, but they are so helpful. So you just put your numbers in and then all the metrics that are important just populate. So you don't have to know how to do formulas. You don't have to know how to like make charts and graphs. Um, and so I've made a, quite a few of those and then courses as well to help people look at their numbers and be able to use their time wisely, whether it's full-time, part-time, side hustle, whatever it is. I love it. I love it. I know because, you know, I, I actually do really enjoy looking at spreadsheets if I can understand, but most spreadsheets are created by very technical people with, and they, they get it. They love all of like the bells and the whistles and the, you know, the stuff. And my brain just goes. <laughs> yeah. Like, so the spreadsheets you know. that the spreadsheets that I have that I don't sell are not pretty. Um, and like, I had a couple of people that at first they were like, Oh, how do you track these numbers? How do you know all this information? And so I was showing them and they're like, I don't know what this means. And so I was like, if I'm going to sell this, it needs to be for people to understand, um, and to be able to look. And the same goes for eBay as well. There's so much information in eBay. 
but I think it does tend to be somewhat um, analytical and hard for people to interpret. And so then they just kind of glaze over it, which I can't change how eBay looks, <laughs> but I can teach you how to look at the numbers and figure out which ones you need. Oh, God. <laughs> He's really being bad today. I'm threatening him with the dreaded water bottle. He's going off. You can stay on that screen. You can't come to the camera. Why do I feel like this is going to be an issue all day? <laughs> and he talks back too. That's a bad thing. All right. So um, I probably should have thought about this ahead of time. Is there uh, some place we can go to look at one of your spreadsheets? Is there an example someplace? Um, you can go to my website. I have it on my computer if you want to share your settings. That would be fantastic. I have it. I look all the time. <laughs> and I was doing YouTube videos this morning, so I actually have it pulled up. Um, okay. How do I, I just got to figure out how to share your screen? Um, I think if you do, I don't know. I, I think if you do settings, well, let me see. Maybe I can just do it without. Okay. Oh, I'm thinking it's Zoom. So hold on. I think I can just do it. I don't think you even have to show me. Okay. Um, let me see. You might be able to. Yeah. So far, it's letting me. Let's see. Oh, so then it's down there and then Got it. to, is that it? Yes. Okay. Look at that. Although now I can't see you. Oh. <laughs> In the, well, because I have two different tabs open. So to look at my spreadsheet, um, I can't see the StreamYard tab. So let me see if this works. Oh, no. Oh, but if you stay in StreamYard and I share it, you should be able to see it on the StreamYard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, true. I just have to scroll. I'm just going to have to be the one to scroll it. So that, yeah, that should work. There we go. So this is one of them. I have multiples, but this is the one that I use the most. Um, and it's to track basically your performance on um, the tab that we're looking on. I actually just added two new charts this week because I geek out over things. And I'm like, I want to see this information. So I figure other people want it as well. Um, so if you already have the dashboard, you get the updates as well with it. Um, and it's in Google Sheets. So everybody, you don't have to have Excel, right? I don't want it to be. <laughs> I much prefer Excel. It's much more powerful. And I am trained in Excel. So it was kind of hard to put in Google Sheets. But I wanted everyone to have access to it. I don't want you to have to have a $100 subscription. Um, so it just goes through and tells you kind of your year to date. I don't know what level of detail you want. I can show you all of it. I can talk you through everything. Yeah. So if you can just, you know, you know, talk, tell me like I'm a kindergartner because, you know, I, I, I see the numbers, but it would help if you would just kind of talk us through what all those numbers mean and, and how we can use those in our own business. Sure. Um, so the top that we're looking at up here, um, is going to be year to date. Summary. So this is just kind of a way to help you monitor how you're doing with your progress. Everything is most things on here is gross um, because I didn't get into the tax side of things. So if you're talking like taxes and how do I find my taxes, this would be a starting point, but it doesn't have like your expenses, like your shipping and like your shipping supplies and all those other things, but it has all your inventory and what they sold for. Yeah. Um, and so everybody yeah. understands your gross sales is that doesn't mean that they're low. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's not like, oh, gross. <laughs> Although it can be. Um, but no, what that means is what you sold without any expenses, without anything taken off of it, that is your total amount that is showing your transactions were. Yes. It's like your very, very top number. It's the number that you are probably going to see nine times out of 10 in most social media um, because it's your top number. It's going to be the right. most impressive, uh, but it is typically without taking everything out. Um, I do a video mostly once a month, depending on time, where I go through my profit and loss statement, which is like the back end where you're taking, mm -hmm. you're starting with your gross and you're taking out your cost of goods and your shipping and your fees and your expenses and your taxes. Um, so if you want like really in depth into the business numbers, I have a playlist on my uh spreadsheet of, or on my YouTube channel of that. Um, yeah. So it starts with your gross. So that's like you said, top numbers, not taking out shipping, not taking out fees, not taking out my cost of goods. It's just how much the item sold for. It is not the number you pay taxes on. Just so no. everybody's clear on that. This is, yes. this is not your taxable amount. No, you want to get your, that taxable amount as low as you can um, to pay the least amount of taxes. Obviously, legally, <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't be taking things that you can't, uh, but the lower the taxable, the better. 
Um, and then we look at the items sold. So these are all things that I was tracking and monitoring to follow how my business was progressing. Um, so I just put it in a nice, easy spreadsheet for people to quickly glance at it. Uh, how many items I've sold this year. So obviously this would be different for everybody. Average sale price. So of those 272 item, 2,702 items that have sold, they've sold on an average for $31 and 74 cents. Um, yeah. It's not good I talk average. about that number a lot with people call it the ASP mm -hmm. because that's that's the number that you can sell the same amount of things but make more money if you can raise your average selling price. Yes, correct. Um and vice versa, you can have a lower average sale price but just sell more items and do more of a volume game, right? Yes. Um, I also have a golden formula for resellers, which a lot of people really like. It's just a $3 spreadsheet. I don't have it up here. Um, but you type in the numbers and it'll tell you exactly how many active listings that you need to make your goal and exactly how many daily listings. Although that information is in here as well. Um, your active listings, this is as a reseller, you know, something we strive for. How many active listings that we have? What does our store health look like? And then your sell-through rate, these are all, and then there's one more metrics that in various different ways that we look at them. Your sell-through rate is how many items you've sold out of how many items you have for sale. Um, so of the 2,702 items that I have, no. Out of the 2,819, um, actually it's both of those together because the items that I've sold, I've had for sale. So roughly like 5,000-ish items, 40% of them have sold this year. Um, and these numbers are not, people always ask me like, what's a good sell through rate? And it's different. It depends on your business, which is why I like tracking it for yourself. Um, and if we scroll down here, I'll show you, that's one chart. We can get to that in a minute. Um, this is one of the new charts that I just added, but it tracks your sell through rate. Um, so these little line dots here are your sell through rates. So it, you compare to yourself and compare to the market. I sell vastly different things than you sell. So your sell through rate is likely going to be vastly different than mine. Um, but that's why tracking your numbers and looking at all of these for various different reasons um, is going to help. This is looking at year to year over year data. Uh, right now, you can see towards the end of the year, and I'm doing videos on this, but towards the end of the year, let me show you here. Um, it's going down. We're going into a recession, friends. Like <laughs> you can see in the numbers, um, but you can also see, we we're talking about this a minute ago. I could just spew. So just tell me when to stop. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. I could like talk forever. Um, so you'll notice here, um, and this is typical, it depends on what you sell, but as my average sale price is going down, so as items are selling for less, my sell through rate is going up. Right. Like if you're selling Louis Vuitton bags, you're probably selling one or two of them. If you're selling ten dollar postcards, well, I don't even know how much a postcard sells for. That's not what I sell. Let's say you sell ten dollar pair of jeans. You can probably sell quite a few more of them. Um, but they kind of work transversely uh, where as one goes up, one's going to go down. However, we're kind of going into a regression or a recession. So you're going to see a lot of things. <laughs> going down yeah. right now. Um, not a whole lot we can do about it, but just to be mindful of your numbers. Um, Gail is asking, what is a sell-through rate? Gail, it's basically you have X amount of items listed, so many sell, that percentage of the items that sold of your total of listings is your sell-through rate. Yes. It's a good way to look at your store's health in an objective way. Um, because a lot of times you'll hear in the reselling community, I have 12,000 items. I have 13,000 items. I have 200 items. Those are just, it doesn't mean anything. You know, someone can have, sorry, that's my alarm to get my kids. Um, dad's, <laughs> dad is getting them today though. Uh, if you look at it in a percentage, then it kind of wipes out how many items you have for sale um, and how many listings. If you have 12,000 items and you're only selling 10 of them a month, you probably have a problem. <laughs> but if you don't look at your sell through rate, then it doesn't, then it's hard for you to gauge kind of how your store's health is doing. Um, so I do it for easy numbers. If you had 100 items for sale and you sold 10 of them that month, you have a 10% sell through rate. If you have 100 items for sale and you sold 100 of them, you have a 100% sell through rate. Um, Which, and then you I don't think them. anybody, does anybody have a 100% sell through? I mean, there might be. They're the anomaly. They're not the norm. So 
yeah. don't try to reach 100% sell through. It's really a, 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 an almost unattainable goal. Big retail doesn't have 100% sell through. If they did, we'd never see anything in the liquidation stores. <laughs> Say that. Yes. Right. Uh, the 100% sell through that. But this is where you're. Um, if someone is like in collectibles or in like the new sneakers that drop, right? Like if it's like the new Jordans and they get five pairs, those are going to sell, period. Right. Um, but can you make a whole business off of five pairs of Jordans when they drop? Some people do, but it's not likely <laughs> for most of us, right? Yeah. So a uh, question was, what should the sell-through rate on average be? Um, so when people ask, is this a good number or what should these numbers be? The two things that I tell you is to compare to yourself and compare to your market. Um, so this is my sell through rate. You can kind of see some of the fluctuation. Um, some of it is I was messing with my average sale price, running sales and, you know, and it helped with my sell through rate. Um, but track with yours. If my sell through rate, you can see right here. And this is why I track it. Track to yourself. Um, it, it went up 3.1%. If you see this declining 5% based off of your numbers, you have an issue. Um, and then compared to the market. So eBay has Terapeak data. Uh, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with Terapeak. I have videos on it. I also have it up on my screen if you guys want to see that. Uh, but I have a tutorial on it. And you can go in and compare like I sell in women's fashion. Um, so I can go in and look at a pair of jeans and say, hey, women's jeans, their sell-through rate on eBay. So we're looking at eBay data, looking at the market, their sell-through rate's 5%. If I'm in that realm, I'm doing okay. If I'm looking up an item on Therapy and let's say the item has a sell-through rate of 15% and I'm at 5%, I have an issue. Um, so it's hard to say what it should be because everyone sells different things. Everybody has different business models. Um, but compare to how you're performing and then compare to the market to kind of gauge how your business is health is. Yeah, I tried to just do a, just a quick search on Terapeak and I picked something that doesn't show the sell through rate. Of course. Oh, well, I have it up. Can you see it now? Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Women's uh vintage jeans yeah they're not they're not providing the sell through oh because i have too big of a date range yeah I, sometimes oh, yeah if you go past 90 days i don't think they do it gotcha 90 um, days. i'm looking at 30 days here and i have videos on this terra peak is like one of the most amazing tools that you should all be using <laughs> um, because it's it's the market it's ebay is showing their data um and then there's also the sourcing insight and I have videos on how to use it, but it'll tell you what's selling in your categories right now and what you should be sourcing. Um, yeah. And so if you're an everything seller, this is going to be harder to kind of narrow down in relation to your sell through. Uh, but if you're very niche, then it makes it very, very easy to go, okay, um, glass vases. Uh, have an average sell through rate on, uh, you know, Terra Peak showing, you know, 25% sell through and mine's only three, then it's time to look at get over back on your boost. Um, and then it's time to look at different things in your business. And that's why looking at these numbers is so important because it helps you when we're going into challenging times and things are going to change a little bit and the things that are selling are going to change. This really helps you know what to source more of, what to source less of, where your price points need to be and that kind of thing. So you can sustain your business and stay profitable. Yes. And so in therapy, what she's like, the sell through rate is going to be right here. Yeah. Um, so like women's vintage jeans um, are 3.94%. I'm at my average uh, is like 10%. So I'm doing really well. Um, I don't necessarily need to change it. I will note though, because I have another tab, as you were talking about, it depends on your category. I have these numbers broken down by categories as well. Um, now I will say because it's Google Sheets, you can only have so much information before it just explodes and won't work, uh, which is the nice thing about Excel. But so I can only put 20 categories, but the, so if you sell in like a gazillion, they're going to be your top 20 gross revenue category. So these are the categories that you're making the most money off of. And then you have your sell through rate and your average profit. Um, so this does take out of your cost of goods. And then you can say, hey, 
what's happening. I want to increase my sell through rate. Sweaters for me have a really high sell through rate, which right now makes sense, right? Um, 17%, I can compare that to eBay, is that on par um, as well as in here I have brands. If you're if you have a wide range, I do women's fashion. So these are like my top brands um, that sell as well. So you can really look at your information and then compare it to Terapeak for the market. This is awesome. This is, this is great, great data. You guys, if you, if you learn anything that's difficult in your business, learning to assess the health of your business through this type of stuff is what will set you apart from the sellers who just are winging it and just going, I'm just going to list, oh, what's over here to the side of me in my death pile? I'm just going to list a bunch of that. Whereas you can be more intentional, like a retail store, you know, they're not putting out bathing suits right now. They're probably putting out Christmas if they haven't already. Well, gosh, I'm Christmas. Yeah, no, they're probably Bobby. putting out Easter right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like the Valentine's is ready to go on the shelves. But, yeah. but that's how on top of things you can be by kind of looking at the history of things. And that's really what we're looking at. We're looking at history, historical selling data that can really give us some some predictions of what we have control of going forwards. Yes. And right now, for sure, we're already starting to see it. Um, I think the holiday is kind of, um, what's the word, camouflaging it slightly because it's the holiday and people have more money. But even now, they're spending less than they were. And we are, at times are hard. They are getting worse. Um, and I don't want to be doom and gloom. But knowing these numbers, like you said, is going to set you apart. And you can, I work under 20 hours a week and do six figures. And it's not because I have, I don't have a large store. Um, and I'm in one of the most saturated marketplaces on eBay. It's wow. because I make strategic decisions. I only, I, you know, I look at my data. I have been on all the platforms before and I looked at it and said, hey, Poshmark and eBay is good. Make, that makes me the most money. eBay has a higher average sale price. So I list on eBay first. I'm not guessing this. I know this. <laughs> I want more money right. from eBay. Um, there's sourcing data in here as well that can help you figure out what sourcing places are best, um, where you're going to have your highest average sale price, where you're going to have your highest sell through rate, um, because friends, time is money. And even if you have all the time in the world, there's still only 24 hours in the day. You want to be going to places that are providing good um, returns for you. Yeah. No, I geek is, out. I can talk forever. <laughs> I totally geek out. out. And I, I, I ashamedly have not gone and purchased your spreadsheet yet, but I'm going to because I love how this is laid out. And I will probably utilize it too for my new brick and mortar um, because we're going to get all of this data that I'm going to have to like compare to something. Uh, and so this and is going to be great because it's I really going to help know, you know, I mean, it, and, and so, so guys, your, your virtual store, which is what your online business is, does compare to a brick and mortar retail. It's just that everything is kind of organized online for people to buy, but it's, it's no different than me having, let's say I put a whole back corner of the store is electronics. And at the end of the month, I go and I look and like, oh, I only sold 1% of those electronics, but I sold 50% clothing. Wouldn't it make more sense for me to expand my clothing space to offer more clothing to my customers? Because that's what they're coming in to buy. So it's the same thing with your retail stores. And knowing I, what your customers are coming in to buy. I think the struggle that we run into with being e-commerce, um, especially now that eBay has like so many, like you have to pay for your listings, but they just completely increase it to where it's like outrageous now. Um, and Poshmark, you can, a lot of these places you can list for free. So where you're in a store, you have to be mindful. You only have so much space. Um, if you're paying for a warehouse and for, you know, a storage unit, you, it, but it's a minimal cost, right? So people listen, 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 list. But you're spending money on it. And what we don't take into account a lot of time, I talk about this in the course, is your time. Because listing, by spending time, not only having a cost of goods, most of the time our cost of goods are low, so we can justify it. Hey, I only spent $2 on this. It's not a big deal. But you spent the time sourcing. You spent the time listing. You spent the time taking photographs. You spent the time cleaning. You spent the time shipping. If you can spend all that time on items that sell, 
<laughs> and if you know what those items are, you're going to make more money. Um, I mean, I really hone in on time is money and using your data because I don't, I have three kids at home. I work around their schedule 15 hours, including social media. And I don't have a large store. I comparative, but for, you know, to be making six figures, it, my items are selling. And if they're not, I'm figuring out why. Um, I did want to touch on this too, because I know spreadsheets are really scary to people. Um, all of these charts are made for you. <laughs> you don't have to make any of them. All you do, and it comes with a how-to video, and I have a, a Facebook uh, group that if you have questions, and then I also have YouTube memberships if you want more support, this is what you do. Um, because I can talk all the numbers and it looks very scary, especially if you're new to spreadsheets. This is what you do. You enter in when it listed, when it, when it sells, you enter in when it, you go in and enter in when it sells, your title, your brand. And this is just good business practice in general <laughs> to manage, especially for taxes, to have this information for your taxes. Um, but you, you are just typing in data entry by line. When you list an item, it goes in, when it sells, you just update how much it sold for and where it sold. Um, and then all of these things populate. <laughs> you have all this information. Um, so if you are scared of spreadsheets, it's just typing in the information that you already have from your items. Yeah. And so where can where can they get this? Because I mean, this was not just so you guys know, like this was not like meant I didn't want to bring somebody on just for you to go buy something. I would never do that. But um, honestly, this is amazing information. And if this will help you, I do want to provide you with her link to go and grab that. So, um, um, where, so where can they go? SarahStylesLLC.com. Um, and there's, if you could type that over in the chat for us. Oh, yes. It just won't come up as a link. Um, I can't type in the chat. I can go to your YouTube. Oh, no, it, I know. StreamYard does not make that easy. <laughs> I, I, can, I can type it in the private chat for you and then you can just. Um, oh, yeah. There we go. And paste it. Sorry. Uh, That'll work. Yeah, I use I use Google Sheets. So because I make the videos and I do my recap, I have a virtual assistant who watches the recap and then enters everything into a spreadsheet for me. So I kind of have this data. And then um, Carrie, who works for me, goes when something sells and she goes and and puts in the the sold price and all of that and the date sold so for you are I doing this have the extra piece of then making the chart that shows you know how everything's working and this is what i get geek out over making all of these <laughs> charts and graphs um and i my virtual assistants update this as well um because it's just data entry you just they list for me so as they list they just put it into the spreadsheet and then as it sells they just update it as well um but if you don't have virtual assistants you can do it there as you well. go thank you thank um you. And i have a coupon code i don't know what it is right now um <laughs> hold on let me look because i want to give you guys a coupon code too um, awesome. let's see what other questions you guys have? i know you have questions I know, I know your brains are spinning right now with, and I know some of you have already shut down because we have like just talked numbers. So what I'm going to do is let's, let's take this off the screen for a moment. Let your brains kind of like refresh and let's get some questions answered about things you might need to know as relation to these numbers. Um, um, and I'll say too, because I don't want this just to be a selling point. Um, I've created this as a one cost. It's $50. Like I don't want to make it to where you're having to pay an annual fee, like just having the access to make your business. Um, but even if you don't want the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet isn't scary to, or scary to you, eBay has so much information in it. Um, and so my channel goes in depth into how to look at eBay's numbers. So if you're like, I'm not ready for the spreadsheet yet, it's still a little scary. Um, I talk all about on my channel and that's you know, what the eBay open obviously presentation was um, for eBay is how to utilize the numbers just on eBay. So you don't have to buy a product, um, how to utilize all that information that they give us, which can be completely overwhelming. <laughs> I know I'm a numbers person. And when I got on eBay, I was like, oh my goodness, like, what is yeah. this tab? What is this? Like, they're really, yeah, they're getting very, very corporate. It used to be very personal and user friendly and and they've grown and you know they're they're all grown up now and and they yeah. use big grown up language <laughs> well and it's good and bad right like when i was at eBay, ebay headquarters talking you know preparing 
for the eBay open presentation, I got to talk to a couple of executives and they're like, oh, what's the feedback? And the information that they give us is so useful, but I think it's coming across in a very scary corporate way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how they change that. Um, I do know how they change that because I had a living uh, based off of making the numbers user friendly. I think they give us too much information for people who don't necessarily know what to do with it. Um, so there are ways that they can do it. But until that changes, <laughs> those numbers are going to be very helpful. Um, so Megan asks, how do you manage profit versus your cost to see if you are actually making money? Beginner seller here. I'm selling, but find it hard to not just keep buying. Yes. Great uh, this is a really good question. Um, so the spreadsheet that I showed you is like the jumping off point. That's telling you your store's health, mostly at a gross level, somewhat taking out the cost of the goods that you're buying. But cost of goods sold is the items that have sold, not the items that you purchased, right? So we're talking cash flow compared to your store's health, which are two vastly different things. Um, I'm not an accountant, so I'm not going to get all the way into that. Uh, but it is definitely mindful of what looking at your store's health and making sure that you are turning, like your items are selling and you're, you're doing it. Um, as far as what you're talking is more cash flow which surprise, surprise, I have another spreadsheet. I don't sell it. Um, but I have another spreadsheet that basically is just managing your bank account um, and making sure that you are able to bring in money. The thing you have to be mindful of is you just want to keep buying. And as you're growing, you have to use your capital. What you're making, you have to grow. So if you're growing and growing and growing, you probably will not turn a profit um, as you're growing or a very minimal profit because you're just reinvesting in your business. Um, for me, I, I was at eBay open and they're like, oh, do you want to grow our, on the eBay for business podcast? And they're like, oh, do you want to grow? And I was like, no. And they're like, you're like the first reseller we've heard say that. And I'm like, I'm at, I'm making the money that I want to make. And as you grow, you just have to keep reinvesting into the business. I, I want to stay healthy and I want my business to be where it's at, um, and still be making money if things start declining. But I don't want to keep buying more items because it's more listing, it's more item selling, it's more. Um, so looking at your cash flow, I think, is being mindful of your source health and what I just showed you. But then also making sure that I know some people are like, I only spend two hundred dollars a month on inventory. I only, you know, and that's I don't I buy inventory when I can, <laughs> but I always list it, too. Um, so it's not an issue and th my health is good. Um, but, yeah, I think you have to work on a budget outside of all of the metrics that I was showing you um, to be mindful to not just spend it all. Yeah. And, and, and keeping, you know, margins in mind. So, you know, I make thrifting videos and, and a lot of times people are upset because I didn't pick something up. And it's usually nine times out of 10 because the price does not allow me enough of a markup to warrant like, and it depends what the item, if it's I mean, something simple, easy like this, I can take a lower margin because I don't have as much time investment and materials and all of that. If it's a larger item, I have to take into account the fact that I've got to uh, store it and ship it and the shipping weight's going to be affect what somebody's going to pay for it. So I try to make sure that I can make at least triple what I'm paying for the item to keep my margins healthy. So that's kind of like a real simple, good rule of thumb yeah. is make sure you're, you're getting triple. If it's a more expensive item, it, then you have to look at it. You know, if I'm buying it for a hundred, I'm okay selling it for like 175, you know, or two. Well, and that's what I was going to say too. I don't, I know a lot of people do like, oh, double it or triple it. Well, yeah. If you buy an, if you shop at the bins and you double that, you're making, you're selling an item for $6. <laughs> yeah, but if you have a high triple. <laughs> that's right. And so I look at a margin and I in the spreadsheet, it does take out a cost of goods in the spreadsheet to look at your profit. What it doesn't take out is your shipping, your fees, and your expenses. So if you have a virtual assistant or a warehouse or whatever it is. Um, but that is once the item has sold, not your cash flow, right? So they're two very separate um things that I talk to an accountant about. <laughs> I'm not a CPA. Um, I just know enough about running a business that you do have to be mindful that you're not spending all the money that's in your bank. Yeah. Account yeah. And I think that's important because a lot of people go, oh, I sold this item for $20. 
and they feel like they made $20, but you didn't make $20. You made $20 minus your costs on that item. Right. And if you are shopping, 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 buying, 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 and you don't understand your store's health, if those items aren't actually selling, um, I hone in a lot on my channel about listing, listing, listing. One of the biggest pieces of advice in the reseller community to make more money is to list more. You can, you can, but if you're listing more, you're also spending more. You're also spending more money and time. And if your store is not in good health, if your sell through rate is 5% and yeah, then, if you're doing more of the things that aren't working, yeah. it's not going to work any better. Yes. yes. You're going to lose money because now you're just spending more time and money on listing, 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 yes. listing. And that's my thing is to, to be consistent, not necessarily list more, list more, list more, but list consistently <laughs> because then that helps the search algorithm boost you up so that people find your items that you have listed. So consider even if it's one or two a day, Yes. That consistency is more important than the quantity. Yes. Right. Right. Let's see. Um, how much product do you feel comfortable stashing to meet your needs? What do you mean by stashing? Bill? I know. I was just like, what? This is all to me. This is stashing. Um, and by that, this is my death pile, but I call it a to be processed pile. We call um, it a profit pile because that's your profit sitting there waiting to be had. Yes. And it's continuously moving over. Um, it's, it's a numbers game, friends. For me, yeah. I'm going to say you're talking death pile stashing. Um, it, I work around my kids' schedule. Um, I work 15-ish hours a week, and that's a good week. I was off last week, um, and I'm still listing 12 items a day. I'm still I'm still doing six YouTube videos a week. Like, I'm still... If you guys were to look on the outside, I'm still consistent. But from the time I put in <laughs> on the back end, um, I, you know, I take time off. My kids are sick and I have the day off. And so to me, stashing is essential in the sense of people bank drafts. Um, I bank inventory because there's weeks that I can't go sourcing um, because of whatever it is. And in order to stay consistent, I like to have about a month's worth of listings on hand. Um, and honestly, that's only because that's all that I can usually fit in this area. I've considered getting a um, storage shed to put more stuff in. I don't, I haven't sourced in, I went for an hour this weekend. I don't do a lot of sourcing either. Um, so I right now I'm like buying out closets. And so if someone's like, hey, I have a thousand items to sell, I will buy it because I won't be able to source in the next three weeks. Um, so I'm probably not the best person. I would make sure that you're consistent um, and know how many items you need to list a day, how frequently that you are um, sourcing to make sure that you have as many items as you want to list on hand for your habits. Yeah. I tell you, yeah, 2020 was the year it was really good to have a death pile. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't. And I think that's why I got into this habit. I didn't. And then I was remote teaching children and I had no inventory for like months. Um, yeah. And then I got into liquidation and I was like, whoa, <laughs> don't do that anymore. But another great question. I sell everywhere. eBay isn't my primary site. So how can I combine that to find out where I am? Uh, so the dashboard that I was showing, it's for up to 25 different platforms. Um, it's completely customizable. It doesn't, I say eBay because that's my main gig. Um, and I know a lot of people watching as well. Um, it, and it's the biggest site and they have the data. But if you want to use this spreadsheet and you sell on Grailed and you sell, you can put brick and mortar in there. Um, it's up to 25 platforms. And that's really just because Google Sheets will explode <laughs> if you tried to do too many more. Um, but so you could put them all on there. Let's see. Let me find the question. I saw the questions coming in here. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to just keep track of income, get this from eBay reports and expenses by keeping all receipts without having to keep a spreadsheet of each individual item listed? I mean, that's possible. That's all, like you said, that's all you need for your taxes. It's not going to tell you how your health of your store is. It's mm -hmm. not going to help you make strategic decisions about like what sourcing place you should go to or what categories are performing well for you or is your sell through sell through rate dropping why is your sell through rate dropping like if you don't have that information then you're just continue to go on as far as taxes go though yes what you're saying is all you need yeah and that's what we're talking about today is we're not just having your numbers for taxes it's having the numbers that are going to help you 
make decisions in your business that are going to help your business grow, help you get through the recession that I feel like we're already in it, but it's going to get worse, guys. I heard a statistic. I, I said this in the member only live this morning that um 87 percent of the sales over this weekend and it was one of the biggest retail sales weekends in years 87 yeah. percent of those purchases were made on a credit card people are spending money they don't have and they're going to have less of it going forward so we're going to see a real crunch happen mm -hmm. probably i would predict over the next year it's yes. the wake up call is going to come. And so people are going to panic. They're going to stop buying things on credit, which is going to affect all of us. So that is why it is more important than ever to know what the habits of your customers are based on the inventory that you're putting out there. You yes. need to know. It, it, don't don't find yourself on a Facebook group in six months going like I've got no sales and I don't know why, because you can know why. You have the power to watch it very closely and know what's happening on a week to week basis in your business so that you can adjust and flex and, and be ready for it. And one of the benefits, I actually just filmed a video this morning on, I think it was like seven ways to, uh, to survive the recession. And one of them was a, one of the huge benefits of being us being entrepreneurs, small businesses is we can pivot. I can look at one of these numbers and be like, this sourcing spot is trash. Like I am not making it money. I think I'm outsourcing and I think I'm doing it. And then I put all the numbers together and I'm not turning a profit. I just don't go there anymore. I, the big stores have contracts. They have per, they have likely purchased all of their stuff for the entire next year. It happened mm -hmm. during the pandemic, right? They were. This is why we saw liquidation explode in our realm. Is all of these big stores are buying? They can't switch the flip. They can't flip the switch as quickly as we can. Um, right. But you cannot do that if you don't know what's happening in your business, right? Right. right. And somebody's saying something about, um, you know, watching the shipping. So mirror in the sky. So shipping is paid by the buyer unless you're doing free shipping. And then, yeah, you need to know, you know, how much of that sales price you're spending in shipping. But but generally shipping is not a number that should affect your margins and the health of your business unless you're undercutting yourself on that shipping you either include or the shipping weights and things that you're charging. Yes, which is something, and this is interesting. So there is a shipping increase right now. Uh, guess who forgot? <laughs> Hello. Um, and I realized it as I was looking at some of my numbers, because I was like, why is my selling cost so high right now? And there's, I mean, and it's 25 cents or whatever, because I, you know, I'm mostly like first class, but 25 cents times 300 items, that's a lot of profit that I'm losing out on. Yeah. Um, and in this time, it could be a time like I'm on Poshmark as well. And when you send offers, you have to include a shipping discount that does come out of your feet, out of your net. Um, right. So maybe looking at some of those strategies to create a bundle and do, you know, some other way, um, because it is going to be getting tight. Not only personally, are we going to see it, but in our businesses, we need to squeeze as much as we can um, to keep that net to where we can survive. Um, because yeah. we all use our income for something, right? I can't believe how much UPS shipping I'm doing. I never used to do this much UPS shipping, but because of using Pirate Ship and their enormous discounts, and then the fact that the USPS decided, mm -hmm. ooh, let's charge everybody more and make it take longer to get there, because that's the way we go nowadays. <laughs> I am using UPS on and almost on, on for sure on anything over two pounds, whereas before I used to be very, very heavy priority mm -hmm. mail. But I don't do a lot of like big things. So I use USPS, but I have, so I do a weekly live with um, Anna and she has like all the stores and she talks shipping. She said that FedEx right now has actually significantly decreased a lot of their rates to where oh. it's actually the cheapest. Um, and she never does FedEx. Uh, I, I That's completely out of my realm. <laughs> I do like first class and sometimes like a padded flat rate. Um, and I think it depends where you're shipping from too. Yes. You know, like, so I'm, I'm only one state over from the ocean here. And so I'm shipping a lot of stuff to zone eight and zone eight is like the farthest you can ship. It's the worst case scenario. Um, but if I'm shipping something, you know, to California or Arizona or somewhere close, 
then USPS is best. And but FedEx almost is never the best for me because I look at them oh, all. Yes. Yeah. It's See, and I live in the middle. I'm in Colorado, so I'm right in the middle, which is a benefit to our That's business nice. um, because my shipping costs are pretty much the same wherever they go. That is nice. Okay, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So there's a question about, can I start selling before I get an LLC? It, yes, um, but that's generally more of like between you and your accountant, what's best to set what your business entity should be. Um, I will just say quickly, because I am an LLC um, and mm -hmm. I get this question fairly often. You don't have to have an LLC to be a reseller. No. The reason you have an LLC is for your liability. So your business, like if someone were to sue me as a business, they cannot come after my uh, personal stuff that it like separates you. Um, I was an LLC years and years ago when I was a uh, hairstylist because then they could come after me and take my family's um, everything. Right. And I've kind of just kept it because I had an EIA and it like makes things slightly easier. But if you're selling through platforms like eBay and Poshmark, they take on that liability. Um, right. If you're doing a lot of direct sales, you may want to consider it or like consult something else. But if you're just selling through Poshmark and eBay, there's no reason to have an LLC. Right. It's just to take the liability away from your personal assets. But also talk to a CPA because I'm not one. <laughs> Full disclosure, I don't give CPA advice. So Patty says, can we use our eBay listings for whatnot sales or should we source separately? Yeah, Patty, use your inventory for where it's But You see when I'm thrifting, like I'm picking stuff for whatnot, I'm picking stuff for eBay. And the decision on what platform it goes on is what's best for that demographic of buyer that I have on that platform. So, but yeah, 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 let's see. Do you keep all receipts from inventory and shipping costs? Um, I'm not a CPA, so I'm going to tell you what I do. I'm going to tell you to talk to your CPA about your best practices. Yes. Um, I do not because everything that I do goes on my credit card. And so if for some reason I needed to pull, I have my own separate business credit card. Um, if I needed to pull things per my CPA, if I have documentation of it somewhere, it's fine. Um, I keep receipts to look at numbers and figure out some of the data that I track and then it goes away. Um, but everything that I do in my business is in my credit card and everything was on my credit card. Um, so I do not talk to your CPA. Yeah. And that is the beauty of our digital world now, but I got to, I got to tell you my dirty little secret. I keep every one of those paper receipts and they're all in a bag. And the day that I get audited, you better believe I'm pulling out that bag of receipts and going, here you here go. You go. <laughs> yeah. I, I asked my CPA if he wants them and he was like, uh, no. no. I <laughs> he was like, I can do it all for you, but that's going to cost you a gazillion dollars. He was like, I don't, you just send me the numbers. I'm going to trust that they are what they are. Right. And you know, it's, it's funny. So I'm going to be 56 here in less than a month. And I, and it's, it's a shift to, to make coming from growing up in an age of we kept all our receipts and, mm -hmm. you know, we had to be super careful about putting our credit card information out there. And, and just like all of these things in our head, we got told are you have to do, you should, you should, you should, this is the way it is. And we no longer are in that place. Like we have, we are night and day apart from where we were 20 years ago. Like it's hard to get out of those habits and ingraining in. So I'm 38, my husband's 40, 40. Um, and we're like on the cusp of it. Like he still wants to keep everything and say five years ago, we probably did keep quite a bit. Um, and then we moved and I was like, throw this all away. <laughs> I am not going to like, I'm not. Um, so it's like, we're right on the cusp. It is my gut to do it. Um, but after him telling me multiple times, I'm like, I don't want to. I have a weird glare right here. I'm just going to go move my shade really quick. So <laughs> yeah. I, I hear a lot of people too are like, well, I didn't, I didn't go through with signing up on whatnot because they wanted my credit card. But, but that's, I mean, that's how you pay for stuff. So of course they want your credit card. Like, how are you going to pay for stuff if you don't give them your credit card? Well, they probably the want your that. Well, that's the beauty of what not for sellers is when somebody buys something, it's paid for right there. Instant. Yeah. Boom. It's 
paid for. You don't have to like, I'm not like offers. Know, wait days for it to come in or like it's paid for. And that is because they collect that credit card. Nobody's going to charge your credit card without your approval of buying something. So it's, it's not the big fear it used to be. And heaven forbid something happens and somebody hacks your card. The protections now are with all the companies. You call them up, say, Hey, that wasn't me. Boom. Right. You get your money back. So nice. it's, it's really super safe. And it's, most of these selling platforms are probably also collecting your social security and or your tax ID number because yeah. you're making a profit. And because I've heard people that are like, oh, they asked me for that. And I'm like, yeah, because I are, like you're making money. If you went and got a job somewhere, you would have to give that information. Yeah. Um, yep. it's, but it's, it's all yeah, it's all money processing. That's I mean, your social security is your personal number, how they know that you're the person that has to pay those taxes. So yeah, that's just how it works. It's hard to change with the times though. I get it. Like it this is, whole life selling, I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I remember my grandmother when microwaves were invented and she was adamant, I will never have one of those things in my house. Is there even a house out there without a microwave now? It, it's just, it's a way of life now. But it was a it was a change that like had to happen. We all transitioned through the generations into different things. And yeah, and you got to stay with the times. That's got right. to. All right, guys, we got time for just a couple more questions. <laughs> this bird. I'm trying not to see. He keeps wanting to eat my sweater, and that's really really bad for him. So that's why I keep chasing him off. Otherwise, I'd be happy to let him stay here. But. I he was good him. for a while. I kind of forgot he was there for a while. He just wanted attention in the beginning. I think he took a nap. <laughs> I I love you. Come here. You can go on my hand. I love you, but I don't want you eating my sweater. I, so mm -hmm. I'm looking at this and I can't put it on the screen, but Carol M is saying something about her sell through rates really low right now, 50% until I look for a few months. So I want, what I want to say is your sell through rate can be, it's contingent on the time period. Um, so when I was showing like that 50% sell through rate, that's for the entire year. Your sell through rate for the entire year is going to be higher because you've had, well, right now we're at almost 12 months worth of sales, right? 11, closing 11 months worth of sales hopefully you've been selling for those 11 months, it's going to be higher. If you look at a week sell through rate, you're probably only selling 30 sales out of your 2000 and you're going to have a smaller percentage. Um, most of the time I look at like a monthly sell through rate because it's a good idea. Um, depending on the volume, if you're a side hustle seller and you're selling three items a month, then you may want to look at like three months to really gauge kind of what your data looks like. Um, but a 50% sell through rate for a store on a monthly basis would be absolutely astronomical. Um, it depends on what you sell. In fashion, that's like completely unheard of. Um, there may be some other things, but you're probably going to have a lower average sale price. Um, but I just wanted to be mindful that like that 50% that we saw in my numbers was an annual number. <laughs> yeah, and it goes back to two. You guys don't compare yourself to somebody else. You have to compare yourself to yourself. Bushi agrees. He's a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It's like the Charlie, the, the, the Charlie Brown wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I'm trying to go through and see if we have questions as well. I think. Yeah, because I, I missed that one. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, you guys compare those. yourself, your business to your business and look for growth in your own business. Because let's say you have a low sell through rate right now, but you start utilizing this information. And then next month you look and you've got a little green arrow saying you're up even a percent, you're in the right direction. And as long as you stay going in the right direction, you're in good shape, right? Right? Um, oh, someone is asking in Excel as well. Um, it's Google Sheets. I don't want you to have to own software. Yep, I don't Google want you Sheets. to buy new software. So it's in Google Sheets, access to everyone. Um, I will say though, it has coding in the background. Um, I've been talking for an hour, so I can't think of what it's called, but it has script in the background. So you have to use it on the computer. You can visually see it like on your phone, you could visually see it on your iPad, but to go in and like actually run the numbers and stuff, um, you have to do that on the computer, which bummer, but that is one of the limitations of it. Um, You're a little rough today. Just want to say, mister. Um, oh, thank you, Melissa. Yes, I am doing a what not sell. So actually, I'm glad you said that too, Melissa, because today, and it's going on right now, you don't have to wait for my sale at 5 p.m. 
There is, there were 12 different sellers today. So there's another one starting at two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. So we're halfway through the day, but there's still plenty of sellers left on the Cyber Monday seller train. I'm just one of many. Uh, mine will be at 5 p.m. But go, go support, you know. That's the thing, you guys, we are a community. And if there is Christmas presents you need or uh, something you need for your home, it's it's way better to come and support one another and find these things from from somebody who's mm -hmm. just trying to make all these ends meet versus going to the big corporate, you know, Walmart, Mart, if you can avoid it. I'm still OK with with Amazon. I buy and um, see I make sure that Amazon's not the seller. Oh, there goes my camera again. Dude, it's not your camera. It's my camera. He was doing so good for so long, and now he's like, "Hey, you weren't paying attention to me." All right, you go back. Um, but if you if you shop on Amazon, look for items that don't have Amazon as the seller because those are third party sellers like you and me. They send stuff into Amazon to get it sold. So. I mean, let's just let, I mean, we're going to go, let's just, it's not doom and gloom, but let's, it's reality. Things are going to get tough for a while. And if we all stick together as a community and help one another, we can all make it through this just fine. Um, I want to touch on someone. It's just a comment though, but they said I would do amazing with live sales. Uh, I did Poshmark live sales. I I can't deal with a whole new platform. That's not in my realm of like time right now. But Poshmark per is doing it and beta testing, so I did it. Um, and based off of my spreadsheet, friends, my average profit is a dollar and seventy nine cents. So I'm gonna say that's a hard pass for me because my profits <laughs> on eBay and Poshmark are like. 22 25 something like that um not to say that i couldn't get there and probably learn it um but right now it's not worth the extra time for me i know other people are killing it in that realm <laughs> but for me not so much yeah and like anything you know it's 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 starting it's basically starting a new business that you have to build up right and that like i don't have time for a whole nother added thing which is other thing like your time is your money um I and it was taken that <laughs> other aspects yeah if I could squeeze out a few more hours in a day, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, so I, Gail is asking, what's your top selling item? I don't know if that's you or me. What's your top selling item? Glass. Yeah. <laughs> Anything glass. Um, I do women's fashion. So people ask me this question and I don't, I sell boring things. I don't have any like cool stories. Like I found that it's like um, my highest average sale price category is bags, um, which, you know, that makes sense. You can have higher luxury bags. My highest sell through category tends to be like right now it's jeans, maybe shoe. I mean, I have the spreadsheet. I could look at it. Maybe shoes is up there. Sweaters is probably up there. Um, I am not, if you want to see fun hauls, if you want to see thrifting, if you want to see all that, I'm not the channel for you. <laughs> I'm boring. I'm a fashion thrifter. Oh, I'm still there. Um, She's I don't really have any good information for you guys, though, which is why I brought her on. And her style of talking to us is like so easy to understand. Like, you know, she gets that we don't have the brain that she has. And so she made something for us that's easy to understand. And I super appreciate that. Um, I'll um, also note to this too, because I get that a lot. And that I, it warms my heart when I hear people say that, because that is my intent is to teach people. Um, I went to school to be a teacher. So I learned, you know, people learn in different ways. And my, I have three kids, they're all neurodiverse. Um, so I know that they all learn in different ways and different things for different people. Um, and so I think it's helped me be able to explain it to others, because um, it is so helpful to understand this information um, and see it in different ways to help your business. Yeah. Do well, I, I really, really appreciate you finding an hour to spend with us. I uh, hope we can have you on again, maybe in the new year after everybody's like got to looking at their numbers a little bit and yeah. um, we get into the, you know, crunch time and, and everybody's I going, sales are down. <laughs> What do I do? Um, I could talk numbers all day, every day. So a channel that has me on for an hour just talking this stuff, like I am here anytime you want, Danny. <laughs> well, asking. within reason, like Christmas. Within reason. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. Anytime you ask, we will make it happen. I get it. I get it. All um, right, everybody. We are oh. at the top of the hour. You got one more thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone just asked for the coupon code. So it's Sarah Styles 2. 
And if you, if it doesn't work, send me a message on Instagram and I'll send you the code. Okay. Sarah Styles too. Melissa can put it over there in the chat for us. Thank you so, so much. You guys go, go get her spreadsheet, start paying attention to your business so you can be prepared for what's coming. And I promise I'm going to get Mark two back on here to talk the tax stuff. He will be, he's in Costa Rica right now. They like, he moved his family to Costa Rica for a few months. Amazing. Go figure. <laughs> but he is the guy to talk all of those. Secrets. Yes. Yes. So we will have him on in the near future. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I will see you over on Whatnot at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, until then, go be profitable and make it fun. We'll see you on thank the you next one. one. <clears throat>